Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Turn in your Bible to Mark chapter number 6. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter number 6. Stand with me one more time if you're able, please, as we look at the Word of God together. And I'm glad to preach this Word, to study this Word, to love the, the Word. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter number 6. I, I've been saved uh, approximately somewhere around 20, 28 years. Um, then the Lord shortly after that called us to preach this wonderful gospel. And i never forget, I tried to get away from preaching the gospel. I tried to get away. I, matter of fact, uh, I, I had to repent. Um, I tried to walk away from ministering. I said, no, nah, I can do without it. I, I'll just, I, so I did. I walked away one year. Folks, I was a miserable person. When God calls you to do something, you'll be miserable unless you do it. And, and amen. And I've been saved about 28 years. And one thing I've learned about God now, we often thank God for the big things, and we thank God and everything, but God cares about little things, too. Woo, come on, somebody. God cares about those little things. M most people look about the big things, and they see all that. If you do the little things, the big things are going to take care of themselves. Come on, somebody. Amen. Think about this. and We're going to read this scripture. The space shuttle. Scientifically proven is composed of approximately 2,500,000 parts in a space shuttle. Matter of fact, if one part of that 2,500,000 parts, if one part fails, like it did in the Challenger in 1986, it was a little old rubber O-ring. That O-ring failed, and you know the, the chaos in that in 1986 it's all over. If one part, 2,500,000 parts, it's all over. Well, God cares about the little things in mind in your life. And the good thing about it, amen, we're not made by, by human standards or, or, or anything else. The Word of God says, Genesis, that God created man and woman. And he formed us into his fashion. He formed us. He made us into his image. And thank God today that everything about you and I, and when we don't notice them, the little things about us, we don't notice the, the, the sinews, and we don't notice the tendons, and we don't notice the, the little thing. God made every bit of it. And this morning I'm going to preach about the little things. Mark chapter number 6 with me today. Oh, praise the Lord. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look with me in verse number 35. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. Now, we get busy about what the Lord can do for us. Jesus said, it's not going to be about me at this moment. It's about what you're going to tell them. And if you can't tell them that, that something's going to happen, if you can't feed them, I'm going to shut down the project right now. Come on, listen. God asked. God requires some things of us. So he said, you feed them. And they said, with what? They said, we have worked for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. Or we, we, we would have and uh, verse number 38, Jesus asked them a question. He said, how much bread do you have? And he said, go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat out in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up to heaven and blessed them. And breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread. And understand this, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they can distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers of bread and fish. Come on, somebody. Verse 44, a total of 5,000 men and their families were fed from those loaves. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for the precious spirit we feel in this house. Lord, the breakthrough, the overflow, the spirit of God. Lord, you have ministered. 
I believe people walked in here this morning, Father, and Lord, during the praise and worship, you let that fear subside. You let it go. You let it leave, Jesus. And I give you glory and praise. And now, Lord, we look to this word. Lord, there are people in this house and people listening online. Lord, they need to hear this word this morning. So I pray that you'll take my, my little bit of notes, Lord. And God, I pray, Father, that you'll anoint this for the glory of God. You preach through me, I ask Jesus. And you touch our ears to hear, our spirits to conceive the word of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them you love them this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, again, I'm going to preach on the little things. As we look into this, um, I, I'm a researcher. I'm a study going through this with Dad over the last couple of days. You know, I, I'm a researcher. I get online. I, I need to know what I'm facing. And, and uh, I come across an interesting fact. It said our hearts beat faster uh, than one time a second. That approximately our heart beats about 100,000 times a day. 100,000 times a day. And uh, if you study that, there's 86,406 or 86,400 seconds in a day. If you exercise, your heart might beat 150,000 times a day. My, my. The average human heart beats 2.5 billion times if you live to be 70 years old and pumps enough volume of blood to fill over three railroad tankers. There's over seven, if you, it's according to whose statistics, some people say 7.5 or more, even eight. There may be more by now. There's estimated that many billions of people living on the earth. If you study that, that's 700 trillion heartbeats that God's keeping alive per second. Per second. Listen to this. That means each day the world's hearts beat 700 trillion times. Now, you think, what does that mean? Here's what it simply means. God makes all that happen, folks. God makes every bit of that happen. See, nobody just thought of the science I just give you. It's a little thing. You don't think about that. You don't worry about how many times your heart's beating or it ain't beating. Some of y'all just glad to be kicking. Amen. Amen. And, and you don't worry about such as that. But God does. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. When we think of how great the Lord is, we often think of him as being some uh, grand and great and glorious. After all, we do know, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, that he's the God of creation. The Bible said that he stood in the middle of nothing. He stood in the void. He stood in the formless. He stood in what was empty, and he put his word on it, and he created everything. Now, how many knows that's big? He's a God of creation. He's also a God of revelation. Oh, thank God for that. He sent his perfect word. How did he send his perfect word? He sent his perfect word through human instruments. He gave us a perfect inspired record of the word of God. On top of that, he's preserved this word and we get to get him this word every day. How many knows that's a big God? He's also the God of salvation. Oh, if you're saved, you ought to shout amen. amen. Come on, if you're not saved this morning, I, 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 I beg you the day the Bible says that you can call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Amen. amen. So we're going to ask you before you walk out of this place to make the Lord the Savior of your life, that you accept him. He's a God of salvation. It simply means this, that God sent his only son. The Bible said his only begotten son into this world, and he sent his son in this world to die for sinners. That was you and I before the Lord. He gave us an invitation. He set it all up for us to be forgiven. He lived. He died. He adopted us into his family. Now all we got to do is live for him and one day we're going to be able to walk through the gates of heaven and go spend eternity with Jesus Christ our Lord. That's a big God. 
You see, well, that, that, that's how grand and how glorious and, and how big God is. We think of God on this scale. And there's no question that we serve a God who specializes in the spectacular. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. He majors in the miraculous. He majors because he's an omnipotent God. He's omniscient. He majors in those things. But I want to point out this morning, he's also God of little things. We're going to deal with that this morning. He's a God who moves in big ways, but he's also a God who's able to take the small insignificant things, the things not spoken about or thought about and used for his glory. I want to speak to you this morning about the little things, amen, that the Lord does. How many knows what he did? He can do now. We're going to look in our scripture about a miracle this morning. And by the way, it had to be special because this is the only miracle that was mentioned in all four gospels. You will find this miracle. It's the only miracle that's mentioned there, so it's got to be special. And we often portray this story about what God did in a big manner, but I want to show you today about what the Lord did and that he proves himself that he's not only the God of big things, but also the Lord of the little things. Now, if we look in verse 35 and verse number 36, you'll see really the, the context here, and he goes to talking about fears, and that's what clicked in my heart. I wouldn't have said this. I knew this was here, that we've studied it and prayed over it, and we're going to mention fears this morning. But the Lord took something in my heart while I was sitting over there standing worshiping the Lord, and when I got to thinking about that song they were singing, the Lord just dropped in my spirit to, to talk to you a minute about fears. And this morning when we look at this in the Scripture, the people now have followed Jesus um, to the other side of the lake. In verse number 33, Jesus has spent his day. He's been teaching them. And you'll see now in Scripture, the Bible said that it's getting late. It's late. It's time that everybody gets to go home. The disciples have come to Jesus and they've interrupted him. They've demanded that he send the people away. Hey, these folks get hungry, Lord. Let's send them away. These men are afraid they won't be able to find anything to eat. The hour is growing late. Well, I mean, uh, McDonald's is shutting down. Hardy's has closed the door. <laughs> Amen. Golden Corral, it's no good. They've closed up shop. All the, the, uh, the, 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 the donut places are closing down. Lord, you've taught them all day. These folks are ready to go get something to eat. They didn't pack anything. The matter of fact, if you study this, they, as Jesus has gotten on the boat with his disciples, here's what's happening. They've not gone too far so the people see and people are gathered up and they're seeing Jesus. So they're walking along the shore. They don't want to leave the teaching of Jesus. They're just walking. They see Jesus. This goes by for a couple hours. Now they've walked 10 miles, according to most scholars, 10 miles. So uh, you know how, if any of you slow walk, you know how 10, long 10 miles is. That's several hours for you. So they're away from anywhere to eat. Uh, and now the disciples are filled uh, with, hey, these folks got to get home. They don't understand. Or, or maybe the Lord's not understanding this. There's no food to be uh, found. And they say, Lord, now, now, don't none of y'all ever say this, but here's what they said. I believe, Lord, you preach long enough. <laughs> let, let, let my people go. <laughs> Amen. Let them find some food. Don't none of y'all ever say that about me. I'll let y'all go in a decent amount of time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, the disciples are saying, Jesus, now you preach long enough. Now they're hungry. They've got to go get some lunch. It's supper time. They've got to go eat. And now, so they go to him and they're expressing their doubts, they're expressing their fears. And I want to ask you some questions this morning. Do you ever look at the situations in life and because of the things maybe you've been through or don't know about it, it fills your heart full of doubt and fills your heart full of fears? How many's ever been there? 
Amen. Do, do, do you ever look at lost family members and you wonder, how, will they ever get saved? Will they ever come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Do you ever look at a physical need uh, and you wonder, is it going to get better? Or is it going to keep getting worse? Uh, are you ever afraid to answer the phone because it might be the next bill collector calling? Do you ever wonder how much time you have left? Do you ever look at the condition of the world and we're in a mess folks in our world do you ever look at it and become afraid and wonder how in the world is all this going to turn out what I'm asking you this morning is to continue to think do you have any fears in your life do you have any fears how many knows we all do every person in this house every person listening you have fears and being, a, uh, 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 being afraid of the unknown, it's part of living in this world. It's part of it, folks. You better get used to it. Having doubts and concerns, that's nothing to be ashamed of. It's something everybody deals with. The problem arises when we become like the disciples. I want you to listen this morning. Watch this. We've got to learn something from the presence of God, from the word of the Lord this morning. I want you to listen very closely today. They were in the presence of the Lord of glory. They were in the presence of God Almighty. But in their hearts they were saying, Lord, we don't believe you can handle this. Come on, somebody. They were in the presence of God Almighty. God in the flesh is Jesus Christ. Uh, yet they're saying, Lord, these people are hungry. Send them somewhere to get something to eat. Uh, you preached. Uh, you made your point. Now send them home. They were saying, Lord, uh, we don't believe that you have enough in you to feed these people. Oh, come on, somebody, their eyes, it looked impossible. They were not coming to Jesus in faith. Here's what they were doing. They were coming to the Lord in fear. They were saying in so many words, Lord, this problem that we're seeing right now is greater than you are. We don't think you can handle it. Mm, come on, I'm going to preach to you in just a moment. I'm laying us a foundation here. Some people think uh, that would just send these folks away. Are we going to all be in trouble? Maybe none of you said those words in this house, but every one of us has acted like that in some manner or other before. Oh, my, my, we fret. And we worry about problems and we wonder, God, how are you going to solve this problem? How are you going to meet this need? What are you going to do, Lord, instead of coming to Jesus with every bit of our heart inside of us and say, Lord, I'm, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm going to face, I'm going to believe in you. I know this problem is big, but I'm believing in the man who walked on the water to move over this. Lord, it's nothing I can do, and it's all about you. I want you to get to that mindset this morning where we carry our problems around we allow our problems to drain us. How many has ever been drained because of all your problems? Woo! Come on, you being honest this morning, every person in here. Because of your problems, it drains you. Because of your problems, you, you, you get worried, you get sick. Come on. Worry, worry will get you in a lot of different places. It'll make your body sick. It'll make your mind sick. I, Hey man, I want to remind you this morning that worry and sin, according to Romans 14, 23, because it says whatever is not of faith is sin. What good is worrying going to do you anyway? Come on, it'll give you ulcers and everything else. I said hallelujah. And I want to remind you this morning that the Lord has commanded us to trust in him in the times of fear and refuse to allow worry to get in the place of our hearts and lives. And I can back that up with scripture. I want to preach this morning and deal with the Lord of the little fears for just a moment as we carry on. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, preacher, you don't know my fears. You don't know what I'm going through. They're not little I've got some big things in my life. They're huge. They're gigantic. They're impossible. They're anything but little. Preacher, you must be talking to somebody who's got just some little minute things going on in their hearts and lives. I've got some major problems going on. They're huge. And that's the same attitude this one. Can I, is it all right to just have liberty to preach to you today? 
that's the same attitude that the ten spies, when they went into Canaan and saw all the giants, eight of them had that same attitude. God said we can have it, but Lord, there's giants in the land, and we won't be a matchup against them. But there's two fellas who stood tall in the middle of what they saw, and they said if God said we can have it, we can have it. It's just a little thing. Come on, somebody. It was an attitude in their heart out of eight of them that says, you know what, I don't care who God is, he ain't that big. That was the attitude of eight of them. Eight of them said, I know this is God, I know this, and I know the Lord said we can have it, but God's not that big to beat all these giants. And regardless of the fears that you have this morning in this house, they're little compared to the Lord. Woo, somebody ought to shout amen. They're little. If he can create the universe out of nothing, surely he can meet your need. Surely, surely he can meet your need. If he can keep those three men and going through the fiery furnace, God can take care of you. If he can secure Daniel, Daniel in a lion's den, he can take care of you. If he can feed over three million Jews in the desert for 40 plus years, he can take care of you. If he can defeat death, hell, sin, and the grave, and Satan by an old rugged cross and an empty tomb, he can take care of you. If he can save us from our sins, he can take care of us. You ought to shout amen. Woo, hallelujah. So whatever you fear in this morning, whatever you might fear in the days ahead, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Bring those fears to the Lord and stretch out your hand and leave it in his hand. And the Bible said, Ephesians 3 and 20, he's more than able to take care of us. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Lord of little. Amen, even those fears going on in your life. Well, let's talk about, we talked about little fears. Let's deal with little faith. Little faith. The context, we get to verse number 37 and verse number 38. When Jesus hears the fears, he says this. Now they're afraid. Now check this out. They're, they're fearful. They wouldn't have run to him unless they were. They are fearful. When Jesus hears these fears, here's what he tells them. He says, well, you go feed them. You go feed them. Check this out, folks. What he's doing is using a direct order. He's saying if they're hungry, give them something to eat. He's giving a direct order here. Notice, it's a command. It's immediately met with the expression of doubt and unbelief. Jesus says, will you go feed them? It's immediately met with doubt and unbelief. From John's gospel, we know it's Philip, the one that speaks in John 6 and 7. He says this, he said, Lord, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. A penny, if you study this now, is referred to a denarius, which was a day's wages, then for the average worker. If he would have taken the average worker eight months to earn that amount in modern terms, it was about $10,000 in modern terms. It was more money than they had had before. Uh, and they knew, they said, well, hey, we can't even take up collection to feed all these people. Philip said, Lord, even if we had $10,000, we couldn't satisfy the people. We couldn't give them enough. It's impossible. Jesus just looks at them and says, feed them. Feed them. A direct order. They're saying, Here's their answer. We can't. We don't have the resources. 
the problem is a problem that can't be solved. Oh my, in their eyes, it was an impossible challenge. But I want you to watch this this morning. I believe the Lord speaking into this house. It didn't matter that they had already seen Jesus turn water into wine. It didn't matter at that moment that he's healed the leper. He's cleansed the leper. He's cast out legions of demons. He's calmed storms, healed people with incurable diseases. He's raised the dead. It didn't matter how he proved himself to them. It was because all it is is a distant memory. They looked at the need and they said, we can't meet the need and you can't either. Come on, somebody. This is their, that's little faith. It's a little faith. It's a little, God We've seen it. We know it. Uh, you can't move on it. We can't move on it. It's impossible. Now, I don't want to be too hard on these fellas. We're as bad as they are. Some of us are probably worse. <laughs> Amen. Let me ask you a question this morning. Has God ever failed you? Have you ever had a genuine need that God did not meet? Have you ever seen him fail to keep one promise that he ever made? I know that's just three questions, but the answer is this. God has never, never, never failed me. Never. Let me ask this this morning. Didn't God change us? Didn't he save us when we asked him to by faith? Didn't he forgive us of our sins? Didn't he replace all the turmoil and sin and junk? And didn't he put sweet peace down in our soul because we cried out with just a little bit of faith? Didn't God come down? Hasn't he give us assurance uh, even this morning uh, that when we call on him, we'll be saved? Uh, and one day, hallelujah to God, when this old body leaves and goes back to the dust, we're going to walk on streets of gold with him. How, come on, somebody. If he can do that, it seems to me that God can get us through anything that this world wants to throw at us. So whatever you have, if you say, Lord, I just have a little bit of faith, God said that's all you need. If you have faith, there's a grain of mustard seed. Come on, somebody. Why don't you go ahead this morning and plant it in the soil? Oh, my, 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 my. Hey, man, I want you to think on this with me this morning. It doesn't take great faith to get big answers from the God. Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith, we just mentioned that, you'll say to this mountain, remove hence and go to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you. The father with a demon-possessed child, Mark chapter 9, what do you mean if I can... How, uh, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asked, anything is impossible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. God will honor little faith. Come on, somebody, look at your neighbor and say, God honors little faith. Oh, but he can't do anything with unbelief. Woo, come on, somebody. He'll honor that little faith, but he can't do anything with unbelief. Matter of fact, the Word of God said, James 1, 6, and 7, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Mm. Jesus is the Lord of the little, even our little faith, folks. He's also the Lord. Come on, I, and we're going to get into this in verse 38. Here we find out he's, he, he's over the little bit of amounts of food that they had. Now, after their display, Jesus asked his men, he said, Hey, how much food do we have? How much food do we have? And they had to go find out and we know from John's account, everything that was available come from a little boy with a little lunch. <laughs> All we have, Lord, five loaves of bread, two fish. These loaves are not big loaves of bread. They're not long loaves. Here's what, if you study that, they're small, flat pieces of round bread. Matter of fact, you'll, you see that, and he says... 
John 6 and 9, we hear the report said, what is this among so many people? What, what is it, Lord? These fellows have sized up the crowd. They know. They said, Lord, it ain't enough. I'm just telling you, Lord, it ain't enough. And from a human perspective, that's right. Come on. From a human perspective, that's right. Oh, but look at your neighbor and say, we walk by faith instead of sight. Hallelujah. We walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody ought to lift your hand this morning. I said, we walk by faith and not by sight. I said, glory to God. Uh, glory to God. Watch this text. Uh, Jesus don't even flinch about it. Uh, in verse number 39, he says, you have them sent out in companies in rows of people. It could be about like you're sitting in the pews, but he said, you have them sent out in rows. Uh, and he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass that kids lunch to me and we're going to bless it and we're going to start passing out uh, this bread. He takes them up, he faces toward heaven and he blesses the food uh, and the Bible said these are important words. The Bible said that he break listen to this, and gave uh, and, and if you study that it indicates that he kept on giving and he kept on breaking. Mm, hallelujah. Jesus took that that little bit of biscuit. Matter of fact, study those fish. They were about as big as sardines. Mmm. Five loaves, two fish. Jesus exercised creative power to accomplish a miracle. To feed 5,000 men and women plus children. Folks, do the math. That's approximately 20,000 plus people. 5,000, if you have a wife, there's 10,000. Average two children, that's 20,000. 20,000 plus men and women, boys and girls, it would have to require that they empty the basket, pass it back up to the Father. Jesus is gonna lift it up. He's gonna bless it. He's gonna bring it down. It's gonna be full and you're gonna pass. Do that to feed 20,000 people. Listen, somebody's being helped this morning. Here's what happens at the end of it. Uh, Jesus said, now take up, when everybody gets full, take up what's left over. They pass it back to Jesus. Jesus gets 12 baskets full of fish and bread. And I believe he looks in the disciples as he's got everybody lined up. The disciples now are surely lined up. And he said, here's one for you. Here's one for you. Because everyone... And let me tell you something. I'm the God of not only the big things but the little things. So next time you look back and remember the meal that came from breaking and giving. Give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 That's one for every doubting disciple. And Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, is still moving in mind and your heart this morning. Don't you ever doubt the hand of God. Don't you ever doubt the Lord. Don't you ever doubt him. Hallelujah. Now, we, 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 we think, how can the Lord do that and take a miracle? The mother who packed that little lunch that day had no idea that that lunch she packed was going to feed all those people. Jesus took what was available to him and he multiplied it. When we give what we have, when we give what we have, he's going to amaze us with what he can do with it. You see, it come from a little boy, but it was placed in the hands of Jesus. But there's some things in your life this morning that you need to hand over to God. Come on, will you stand with me this morning? Their problem was how we're going to handle it. Matter of fact, I want to give you four things that we see in this scripture. First thing they thought, well, let's just get rid of the problem. Second thing they thought, we just need to raise more money to do it. Third thing, they said, we have little, but it'll never be enough. And finally, somebody got smart in John 6 and 11 says, hey, let Jesus have it. Let Jesus have it. If you can ever learn to bring your little to Jesus and let him have it, here's what happens. He uses it for a great way for the purpose and the glory of God. 
Here's what I want to say to you this morning in a simple little sermon God give me. Bring what little bit of faith you have to the Lord and watch your mountains move. Woo, I wish I could preach this morning. Bring what little bit of faith you have to the Lord and watch Him multiply it. Bring your little testimony to the Lord and watch Him save souls. Bring your little praise and watch the Lord get all the glory for it. Bring your little bit of abilities to the Lord and watch Him use it. He specializes in the small things. He used the cry of a little baby to bring peace to Abraham. He used a little stick in the hand of Moses to part that Red Sea. He used a little boy named David to remove a big giant. He used a little piece of bread called manna. And that little piece of bread fed God's people for 40 years. He used a little leather mantle to part Jordan River, the Jordan River for Elijah and Elisha. He used a little widow with a little meal and a little oil to take care of the man of God. He used a little girl named Mary to bring the Savior to this world. Hallelujah. Who knows what he'll do with your little this morning if you can just put it into his big hands. Who knows? This morning you may have some big things or you may have some little. But let me tell you, nothing's above God. I'm learning it more and more as you and I walk with the Lord. I can't outdo Him. I can't outgive Him. Folks, if we'll learn how to commit things to Jesus, we'll be able to say, you know what? I'm pre appreciating the little things the Lord does. I'm appreciating. I want to close with this this morning. Uh, I've read a lot of commentary. And in all that commentary, you do run across people that you know not to look up anymore. Because one of them said it was just an optical illusion. Just appeared that way. And if I could speak honestly and brutal, how dumb. I might, can, I might can trick you, but you ain't going to do it to 20,000 people. Come on, somebody. Another person in commentary writers, we find these in biblical commentaries, said that people had their lunch in their back pocket, and when they saw what was going on, they just began to pull it out, and everybody shared one another. I'm thinking, how are you going to get five loaves and two fishes in every one of y'all's back pockets? You, it ain't done. Why can't people just take the Bible at face value of what it is? Come on, somebody. Jesus is Lord of the little. Why don't you this morning, why don't you understand if you've got a little situation, you can bring it to the Lord. And God can move on it. God can move on it. If you lost, call on the Lord. Call on the Lord to be saved. He'll put you in fellowship with Him. Will you bow your head all over this building, please?
Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands all over this building? Come on, why don't you hear that? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you come stand around this altar this morning? Oh, hallelujah. That's the, that's the Lord talking to us, folks. That's the, the gift of God, the spiritual gifts. God said, fear not. See, the Lord's stirring that in our hearts. Why don't you lift your hands this morning and begin to pray. You pray the way you want to right now. This whole place is a, it's a time of worship, a time of altar. Why don't you go ahead and begin to give it to the Lord right there where you're at this morning. Right there where you're at today. You're tired of being, being lost. You're tired of, of not living for Jesus. Why don't you meet me right here? The rest of us, come on. If you've got fears in your heart and fears in your life, Amen. God just spoke to you. It was a personal thing. Oh, he wants to do something in your heart. Let him be God right now. Come on all over this building.
stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing Yeah.